guys. Nick here. Thanks for coming by. Uh, a couple of people have asked me how my how I view life differently since my diagnosis, and uh, I'm gonna kind of do several videos. I feel like on that because uh, that's gonna take me a while to kind of circumnavigate it and kind of figure out how I, I want to deliver that message uh, because it has changed a lot. So. But right now, I kind of want to talk about just how I view things in general um, now as opposed to prior of November of 2021. Um, I, I used to stress obsessively, and uh, things that I would stress about were my reputation, uh, kind of how I was viewed. And, and while that's still an important thing to me, the, the the view or the image that I wanted people to have of me was, was very different. Uh, I wanted to appear successful. You know, I wanted to appear um, strong. I wanted a certain amount of fear uh, of me in, in certain levels. Um, not that I was going to physically hurt someone. I've never really been a, a violent person, but um, it was kind of that, you know, with fear comes respect type type of thing. And um, I used to take things very, very personally, like really personally. Um, and uh, but but most of all, you know, people's opinions of me meant a lot. You know, I, I never wanted anyone to be mad at me. Um, but uh that kind of goes into just my attitude in general. It's very, very selfish. Uh, I, if it didn't impact me directly, then it it didn't matter to me, and and I didn't really care uh, what ideas I squashed or whose opinion I dismissed or uh, ideas that that I wouldn't really ponder on and think on. Um, I was always sure that, that I was right. And I was also very big at playing the blame game. You know, I, it was always something else's fault. It was someone else's fault. If X, Y, and Z hadn't happened, then this wouldn't have happened to me. And it was always about, about me. And when I was diagnosed, um, it was the scariest really moment of, of my life. And I don't just mean that moment in general. I mean the the, the following months. You know, I, I think that the term moment is is kind of a, a superficial term. It, like to me, it doesn't mean right this second. You know, it it means more of a it's more of a time frame or, or time of reference. And I've I've changed a lot in the things that I have that I obsessively worry about. Um, I've, I, I, I'm, I'm going to call this video fear and loathing with my diagnosis because I, I have, there's still a ton of fear, you know, of dying. I don't want to die. You know, I, I have a lot of things that I want to do and, and I want to be, you know, around for Terry and I want to be, you know, around, uh, you know, for you guys. You know, and and people that you know, I've been able to been able to build relationships with uh, di during this process, and I'm I'm very grateful and I'm very passionate about the, this kind of mission that that I've set for myself. So, I I, I take pride in different things. You know, I was very very prideful of how much stuff I had, you know, and whether it was, you know, cool stuff or whether people was envious of me. I wanted people to be envious of me so bad. And I, I think that's because, you know, I was always envious of other people because I always felt um, inferior. You know, I, I never felt like I really matched up or measured up to to a lot of people around me. Um, I, I really had a problem with inadequacy. And, uh you know, and I also had some abandonment issues when, you know, during my life, um, and that, that stems from a lot of different things. But since I was diagnosed, I really started putting a lot of thought into what I'm afraid of and more so how I manage that fear. Uh, 
what I kind of do now is I really make it a point to make sure that I've done everything on on my side to make sure that the outcome that I want happens happens and and if it doesn't uh I'm I'm often okay with that um I I'll take my transplant process for for example I really really wanted you know to have that transplant now you know for for obvious reasons uh, all, I wasn't seeing the big picture uh I I knew that getting a transplant, which I still haven't received, was you know ultimately the answer to to my illness and to my condition. But I say the word ultimately, and now that I think about it, it it's not ultimately the fix. You know, there, there's other damage to my body that that's been done as well that I also have to monitor. So, you know, I I had to become okay with the fact that you know it wasn't going to be a quick fix even if it happened right then you know i the the process wouldn't have been possible because physically i couldn't have handled it you know and and the 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 loathing you know i say that because it's just it's awful you guys that are in the spot know you know to to wait you know and not necessarily having your life in other people's hands um because you know we do that if we have having surgery or anytime you know we're we're put out you know or or anything like that but it's more being on another timetable and it's a a timetable and a schedule that you're not at all in control of uh so it it's made me more patient and it's made me more understanding um i've i've really learned to listen um, i used i was always the one that needed to be talking i was always the one that had to drive the conversation or the one that had to uh, you know be in control you know of of the room and now i realize you know how little control i have over things around me and i'm not talking about spirituality i'm not talking about religion or anything like that. I'm not a religious person. Um, and and a lot of that, you know, kind of changed throughout my throughout my process post diagnosis. And, you know, you you may think that it that um, you know, being, you know, alive still, you know, or that process would have brought me closer to a God or or to religion. Um and it was actually really the quite the exact opposite um in the sense that i started looking at things through a lens that i felt to be the truth and i think that's the biggest thing uh you know is that i was i no longer was concerned with uh stating my personal spiritual beliefs because i was no longer afraid to have uh be judged by uh, people that I may have been raised with when I was raised in the church or, or whatever else it, it it impressing people or worrying about people in that sense stop being uh, or their opinions stop being as important to me and uh, that helped me become uh, very much at peace with with what you know my specific beliefs were and in that it made the process go uh a lot easier and it made me a lot more accepting of, of my situation because you know i was you know i i didn't believe and i don't believe in the you know pray it away you know or you know pray hard enough you know and it, it'll happen you know in one way or another i i, I realized that in very much it's it's in my hands to to control to my best you know what i can do physically you know and um, I do think that miracles happen, um, and when I say miracle, I use that term very loosely. Uh, I feel like there are things that happen that we just can't uh, medically explain, um, you know, and, and I don't think there's necessarily anything supernatural about it. Uh, I think that, you know, sometimes we just don't, uh, we don't have an understanding or a full understanding of, of the situation. You know, I'm 
I'm sure that when the doctors told me, you know, that you have, you know, this long to live, you know, that was, that was accurate because if I had continued on the path health wise and drinking the way I was, you know, and all of that, then that timetable was actually probably very accurate. But I, I feel like if you were to write out, you know, exactly all the things that I've done and the steps that I've done uh, over this last year and seven months that, you know, the physicians will say, yes, you know, that what is happening, you know, is possible. Um, but I feel like a lot of the, the things that were, uh, you know, being said were, you know, looking at the situation as they have it now. And, and I think that's one of the things that I've really learned is um, the, the capacity to not foresee or predict the future, but be able to evaluate and set forth a plan so that I'm much more, uh, I have a much better sense of what the outcome is going to be. And, and and that's the biggest thing, you know, that's that's changed, shall I say, with how, how I view um, just current situations. Now, in, in future videos, I'm going to talk more about kind of my personal philosophies um, of life and how I choose to live mine, uh, not forcing mine on, on anyone else's, but, but that's the, the biggest thing and most notable, noticeable thing uh, in my mind, you know, as I process it, I see how my thinking has changed. So um, I hope some of that made sense, uh, just kind of rambling a little bit, but um, as always, I love you guys, and, and I, I love, I'm so grateful that you, you know, take a little bit of time out of your day to, to spend with me and, and allow me in your home and in your head, um, you know, the, the comments and everything, they just, they just mean the world to me, and um, I'm glad that it's helping some of you guys out there. Um, as always, in the description below is a link to my Facebook group for uh, liver disease and cirrhosis support. Um, remember, just click on there if you want to uh, join, hit join, read the rules, agree to the group terms, and uh, myself or my other admin, Aaron, uh, will accept you and you'll be in. Um, as you guys know, I'm also on Twitter at, Fortness, at Fortress Farms 82. Uh, all that stuff's in the description below. So more videos to come. Um, that's just kind of the start of my uh, life philosophy. Um, it's Monday. I hope everybody has a great week and I'll see you guys later.